now I know how uh, some, some other people that have played these intense machines uh, in, in different fields of games have felt like I saw, I remember seeing a video of, of Kasparov playing Deep Blue and he's just like, so intent and, and uh, it's, it's tough definitely, you have to play your, your best game um, for what they put together here. So one nice thing about this is um, I have unlimited time to think, and against a uh, against a human opponent, just pausing and thinking that they're gonna have an idea that I have something to think about. So that's giving some information away up by itself. So this time they brought back Mr. Pink, which is uh, which is the uh, the first bot we faced. And so I'm somewhat more respectful of its bets as opposed to insane Agent Orange. It's not to say this one's not too crazy, but it's not as crazy. But you can see this is like torture. You don't do this in regular games. In regular games, it's, when I play against a human opponent, the decisions are a lot faster, but so are theirs. And so I don't have to super deep think everything. It's not fair what you guys have done. <laughs> <laughs> so happy. We're, what are we at here? We're uh, 424 hands away from me being able to like play normal slugs again. <laughs> so, it's so exciting for me. When I get to when I get home and I start playing poker with these get normal humans, I'm I'm just gonna feel like, wow, who are these people? Whoa. I can't play. <laughs> it's 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 great. I mean this has been an exhausting match. We just came off of the World Series of poker two months straight, everyday tournaments, you know, and, and it was just like a solid block of play. And this is like the most intense, you need such intense focus to be able to, to, be able to play at a level that's competitive with this thing that they've made. <laughs> that, um, this beast, yeah. That um, it's gonna be nice to be done with it. Oh, 424 and let's do it. You were heads up against Phil when you play similar No, I had crush him. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, Phil stop. Um, we'd uh, no, uh, for sure not, because I couldn't I couldn't think this deeply. No, uh, he's uh, and we don't get this kind of time, so we have to think a lot faster on our feet. Um, and so I would kind of just default to my normal aggressive strategy. He would default to his normal kind of trappy strategy, which is a real bad matchup for me, actually, now that I think about it. In order for me to bluff this, though, I have to put a ton of money in because I have to call this street, that's 20. Then when it bets on the turn, I have to raise it, that's another 40. So it's like I'm laying like 60 to try to win the, the 60 already in there, plus those other bets that it gets in on the turn. And um, it's not worth it, pot small, just take it. Or as Phil likes to say, take the money, kid, you're the best. Take the money. <laughs> oh. On the plus side, Phil folded that hand too, I'm pretty sure. Because Polaris plays like a lot looser than Phil does, so. But see the downside is I'm demoralized by that and Bot doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great hand for us, by the way. Not only, I mean, obviously, I won it, that doesn't matter. That was seven deuce offsuit, and Polaris never lives before the flop. So, Polaris is going to raise the 9 8, Phil's going to fold the seven deuce, and we're never going to have to run into that hand, that, that, whole, that whole thing that just happened. So, that's going to be a two way. Well, Polaris can win a little bit, but it would have missed that whole collision that just happened. That was a big hand for us in the match. But that's luck, just so you know, that doesn't mean anything. It just, it's just 
just like the luck of the play style. So, not really that relevant. Although you could say, you could make an argument that by limping with those kind of hands, you give an opportunity for the B7s to lose pots like that. So, it's not all luck, but anyway, it's, it's variance anyway. It's some form of randomness. Because it could have been the other way around, right? By the way, it's really important to know it's not really important how I'm doing here. It's important how we're doing collectively. I think most of you understand that, but hey, this thing could beat me silly and it would tell you nothing. And vice versa, I could crush it and it would tell you nothing. You only really know how we're doing uh, when Phil comes down from his death or never went up there. So. Hundred and fifty-three more hands of torture. Uh, so exciting! I'm going to Hawaii right after this. So, you two months down there. Huh? Schlumps. Yeah, no, no playing, no poker. <laughs> two months of the World Series, then torture for four sessions, uh, and then, you know, we're almost free. I'm going to tell hours. you like this. I played um, heads up, just like we're playing your heads up. There are two different sessions I'm going to tell you about. One was I played um, this guy, he goes by the name of the RDAA online. We played for uh, we played for one week straight, uh, not uh, eight, oh wait, no, 12 to 16 hour days for one week. That was like nothing compared to I did pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only telling you about the good ones. <laughs> anyway, that was one. And then uh, another match, um, I played uh, this guy live, and we played for 52 hours straight. 55. 55, sorry. 55 hours straight. No breaks. Heads up. No breaks. I didn't even take the like the rest, the long restroom break. We just ran on the restroom. We ate at the table. 55 hours of straight heads up poker. Um, and it was nothing like, I, at the end I was like, you know, I was dozing and stuff, but, but mentally it, it wasn't nearly as exhausting as uh, what this thing's put me through. It's like a ringer.